let's take a little tour of our email microservice. Now this is a standard Rails API app with the standard layout. But before we look at the code, let's review how this service is going to work. We're expecting a client to post the full details of an email that it wants sent. And the mailer should take care of dealing with the email sending service, in our case, Mailgun. So let's look at this from the database out. The first thing that Rails needs when it's accessing database records is a model class. In this case, our outgoing email model is completely trivial. Rails is inferring everything about it from the database schema. Now the connection to the database is set up in database.yml. We've set this up to connect to the Postgres database that is available at hostname database for all of our environments. There's development, here is test here. We're customizing the name of the database for testing because that will get dropped a lot when we're running our tests. So how does the outgoing table get created? Well, in Rails, you use a migration, and here it is. This creates the whole table, including all of the fields that we're going to need. So that takes care of data storage. The next part we need is the REST API, and that is written in this controller, the outgoing emails controller. Here we're exposing index and show methods for get requests and a create method for posting new emails into the system. Down here, after we've created a database row for our outgoing email, we go ahead and enqueue a background task that's going to actually send it through Mailgun. And then we return immediately. The background tasks implementation is in tasks slash send email dot RB. Here we're using environment variables to protect our credentials from Mailgun. This is a pretty common method in Rails, and it works well in all of the environments we're going to be working in. In the actual task handler, that's this perform block down here, we fetch the new record from the database, and then we send it to Mailgun. Notice how if we don't actually have any Mailgun credentials, we fake a success. This helps the rest of the system work well in a development environment when you don't necessarily want to really send email. Now the background tasks get run in a separate process, which is done by running a rake task. Most of that is automatic, but there is a little snippet in the rake file that has to be here. Here it is. We're pulling in the rescue tasks, and then we tell it which queue to pay attention to. Stepping back just a second to our actual task, up here we define it in this queue here. Giving your queue a name will allow multiple queues to coexist on the same Redis service, which is going to be important if you're going to have more than one service that has background tasks. Now this is a pretty degenerate service right now. A more full-grown version would also handle incoming email and send notifications to other services when email arrives on their target email addresses. It would also handle delivery and open events from Mailgun and all kinds of other sophisticated things you can do. But this is good enough for this example. So to summarize, we have a Rails server that implements a REST API and enqueues background tasks. We have code for a background task worker, which handles long running processes and ships emails to Mailgun for delivery. In the next video, we'll start this service up in our development environment.